Hey, Kim. Thank you so much for being my guest, first of all. And uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, well, thank you for inviting me. And yeah, I'm very fine. Just be walking the dogs in the storm and stuff like that. So. <laughs> yeah, so what kind of weather is in this moment there? Well, we have some storm from Atlantic, so the winds are quite strong. And, but it's not raining, so it's fine. Yeah. Are, we you have, looking, uh, are you located in London or where? Oh, no, no, in the south coast. Okay. Uh, you have Brighton. I'm kind of like a, oh, less than an hour away from Brighton towards east. It's a small town called Eastbourne. Yeah. How long have yeah. you been uh, in the UK? 32 years, I think. Okay. It's a while. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been in this, in Eastbourne, I've been over 25 years, so yeah, so a long time. Yeah. And I'd, I've been living basically more settled here than ever before. Like in Finland, I was going from place to place. And so, yeah, this is kind of like a hope, finally. <laughs> do, you, do you miss Finland? But hey, some things, like, you know, it, it's... Like I, I like the archipelago between you know Turku and and Stockholm. That that that's a really, really lovely place where if you have a boat you can go around and and it's nice to see snow occasionally and stuff like that. But but not really. It's yeah. like like I, I I of course the reason why I'm here is that I wasn't very happy in Finland. So so but. The, my partner Judith really, really loves Finland, so we go there more often now. And she's kind of like made me see the good things in Finland. So yeah. it's like as an English woman, she kind of sees it so different. And then yeah. I will, oh yeah, that is actually quite nice. <laughs> so yeah, yeah no, I think nothing always, against Finland. Yeah, Sorry? it's always different when you are from a place and someone else come. It's uh, it's yeah. really different and. So I, I can relate because when someone asks me if I miss Italy, I'm mm. like, um, something, but not yeah. really, because I feel that I belong to Finland. So yeah. everyone yeah. has its place in the world. Yeah. And it's a it's a big deal when you change countries. So you have to be very sure if you stay that, that you actually belong there. It is not like something that, yeah, I might live there for a while, you know. Yeah. Not that type of thing. So, yeah, the yeah. reasons are quite solid. And Finland is, of course, it has changed quite a lot since I left. So it's it's a different country. And, yeah. and so, yeah. yeah I Some was, uh, you know, I was in Helsinki last uh, October. But mm. normally during these 10 years that I have been in Finland, I have been in Helsinki just in the airport. So oh, all right. When I was in October, then I was. What, what's going on? What's mm. what's what's this? Actually, I was oh, I was in Tuska. So the, the, during the summer, I was like, okay, this is a different place <laughs> <laughs> yes. because I live I live uh, eight kilometers from Pori. So oh, okay, all oh, right, yeah, yes, it's, it's, it's a, quite yeah. different quite the situation. Different, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, and yeah. <laughs> Helsinki is quite nice. It's like it's quite compact, so it's quite yeah. nice place. We are in the center. It's, everything is close and yeah, easy to move move around. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about you. And okay. uh, <laughs> you are considered one of the pioneer of uh, Finnish heavy metal because mm. uh, in the late seventies you uh, found the sarcophagus, mm -hmm. uh, but. At the beginning, you had some, you had some issue with the name. You were not like able to play with the the name sarcophagus. Am I right? No, no, that came later. Okay. That was the third album that the name was changed. Yeah. So, so because like like the, there was two sarcophagus albums, Cycle of Life and Envoy of Death, and then 1981 came the. Uh, Kimmo Kuusimi band Motorilin, which was in Finnish, and it was basically it was the the kind of core of the band was still there, but then there was guest singers and and the drummer was like you know like a, appearing just on the album, so it was more like a studio album, so it was quite weird, and and because the the music was very 
kind of like at that time nobody really knew what I what the hell I'm doing. It was just kind of like like something that pe most people thought that well, it's just something that will go away and it's not important and and all that. So so the name I had to constantly invent something to change it so that the record label keeps on putting the albums out. Yeah. So I have to kind of like you know like the changing the name, singing in Finnish, having probably the one of the most famous Finnish pop singers as one of the singers, Kirka. And uh, so that was to make it something new again. And also yeah. because I'm kind of like I'm quite I'm a hyperactive person, I need to progress. So so it's just, it was kind of like the first album was a bit like, you know, like, hey, this is great. We are doing something and recording. And then the next one was really like where we tried to kind of do it right. And the third one, I wanted to kind of take it to the next level. So so it was kind of like also in my nature is to kind of push things and try to. I'm not happy about doing the same thing for a long time. So, yeah, no, that's yeah. not my. Yeah. I think that uh, that that is a thing about uh, artists in general. You need to experiment, and uh, when you look back to your work, you are hmm. quite critical, and uh, you you feel that you need to evolve. So yes. it's, yeah. it's quite yeah. common. I think most of the artists, not ev everyone probably, but most of the artists need yeah. this to push to push through the the limits uh, because everyone has its own limits so you need to go through the limit and yes, uh, yeah. and get your and there's always the your fans are holding you back because they don't want you to change they want to have the same repeat 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 which is quite funny <laughs> yeah it's uh, actually cool. you know in the i don't know if uh, in all the genre genres of music but when it comes to metal and rock uh Every time that a band change, they do a new album. It it takes uh, another way that is different yeah. from the beginning was. People are so mad always, and I don't understand that because uh, the band needs to experiment to find something else. If they are stuck with the same thing all the time, then the the passion is going to die. Yes, and and it 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 is kind of like in my case that that if I did something that was new, that means that I'm into inventing new things and wanting to do new things. So how would I want to keep on doing the same thing through the years? It, it of course I would like to invent the next thing, which I'm hopefully doing now with a new project. That that yeah. hopefully is kind of having quite a lot of weird elements and things that are going to be very different. Yeah. So, so yeah. So let's talk about this new project that is mm. Ancient Streaming As Assembly. Did I pronounce yeah. it right? Yeah. Ancient Streaming Assembly. Yes. So it's a cross heart project, uh, and with you, the, the, there are two other person, but you are hoping with col for collaboration, for what I yeah. know. We, so yeah, we. Yeah, we've done already quite few. Because there's actually quite a lot of music ready. It has, okay. hasn't been released because uh, it, 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 it's, it is very complicated because the music is one part, but then there's the videos. Then we actually have the environmental message behind this, that, that it's yeah. kind of like, you know, trying to talk about what's wrong with the world and how we are actually going to screw it up if we don't do anything. So. So that's it kind of like it, it has so many different aspects and, and which I love because it it's it's not the band, it, it is really is a project. So it can go whichever way I kind of want it to go. So it doesn't follow any rules, which is kind of like, you know, for me is is very nice. And for example, I've just been today working on from the nineteen eighty one because we did with the motor in really, the motor bus, we did like a full album like music video. This probably was the first ever broadcast quality full album length music video ever made. And because if you check the internet, everybody kind of thinks that Michael Jackson's Bad was the first one, and that was 1988, but this was 81, so seven years before. And uh, and there's a, actually an environmental song called uh, Metallin and Sateenkaari, which is the metallic rainbow. And... Uh, 
because of the technology and AIs and all these wonderful things, I'd be able to uh, upgrade the video into 4K from the old video. So, which is quite amazing because you kind of like, yeah. you know, suddenly when the faces and everything has been a bit like video kind of like blur, blur, and they are now clearer. And uh, and so also what I did with the music then is that uh, I took the original because it's Muska, the Muska Babicin who sings it. And you probably know that she's again very famous Finnish pop yeah. singer and uh, great voice. And uh, so basically I separated the voice from the original song because that's possible nowadays. It's yeah, quite a lot yeah. done like that. And, and so basically 2010, we recorded the the kind of because we had a mini tour like a comeback tour which was the end of the band and uh and 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 we recorded the whole set in one day which is not a lot of bands do <laughs> but we did it and uh and so it's as close as it can be to kind of like you know to original in a way it's just like upgraded sounds the band is basically the same the drummer is not because the drummer is unfortunately dead so so we have another drummer so basically, I used the the 2010 background, and then I put the 1981 singing on it. So basically, the background has been now upgraded. It sounds better, but it has the original singer, yeah. and then the video is now 4K. And and I know it will annoy a lot of people that I think <laughs> going to kind of like and fiddle with the original. You cannot do that, but I did it, and. But for me, it's kind of it's it's an interesting exercise into kind of like the that you can actually do that type of stuff, and and that will be co coming out as an instant streaming assembly project because it's my music, my video, it's yeah. that kind of new version of it. So yeah. you so have that, no rules; you can do whatever you want. Yes, on this and and so. it is if people can like it or hate it or whatever <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> The, the point is that you are happy with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because it is kind of like, I think that I've, I've been in the business quite a long time. And, and that's part of the, like with the COVID. But actually, it it, I, it was, the illness was quite bad. But, but the actual event was quite good because everything that I've been planning and everything that I was going to do went out of the window because the film business is one of the, sites that were very heavily hit with the COVID. And and that gave me kind of the time to kind of suddenly it was like, you know, hey, I can do now like whatever I want to do. And and then I got into back into an old project. The, this this ancient streaming assembly started 2007 as a film project. And and then I met Thomas in, in Siberia and then we talked about it there and, and then during the COVID, it was resurrected in a new form and new way. And because I thought that 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 there's, if you do commercial videos, it's great. And like I said, that I'd be exceedingly lucky that I have been able to all my life do exactly what I want and make money out of it and live from it. So that's really kind of like brilliant. And, and I know a lot of people who would like to have that but haven't been able. So I'm not complaining, but... There's a lot of in the commercial film world that you do corporate videos and all kind of that are basically repeat of the same thing. <laughs> Again, like we are yeah. talking about the same, but it's just kind of like it exactly like you did before. And 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 I kind of realized that I don't really want to work with the corporates anymore. That I I feel that I've done it. And 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 then kind of thought that it would be really nice to do something sensible with the skills that I have collected during the years and 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 so the environmental because in 80s i did a lot of environmental films and 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 91 i did a project called uh dream on which was for the worldwide fund for nature international and uh, it kind of got a lot of attention at the time of course we didn't have internet so it was different up by attention but it was like it was the first finish music project ever to be on the music tv mtv uh, and it was globally on mtv we were the news for a week and 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 so it was quite big deal at the time and uh and that it was also for the wwf it was because i went to see them in in switzerland to kind of 
give it to them. And and they said that they have never had anybody to come with a ready-made project and said that here it is, you can use it. And not having some kind of like, you know, I need, I want this, I, you know, that it's just gonna, yeah. and so that was quite nice to hear that I was the first one that, that yeah. actually took it something and didn't want to have something in return. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so in a way, then I, with the COVID, I thought that, well, this is the time to kind of continue, combine the, because I am kind of being, environment has always been a big deal for me because I'm, in the 80s, I got aware of what's happening. So all what's happening now, it, 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 we knew it. We have knew it since 70s, yeah. but we haven't really reacted. Of course, Finland was ahead of the kind of like recycling and everything like Germany. But here, the environment has just kind of popped out not that long ago into the discussion. It, it's not really something that people have been wondering and pondering. And, 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 but in like in 80s in Finland, they were kind of limiting the street lights in cities to save energy and all kind of like, you know, sensible things. Of yeah, course, that is still going on uh, compared, if I compare Finland to Italy, for example, mm. uh, the res res recycling uh, things in Italy mm. is something new. There is still a lot of work to do there. Yeah. Um, I have always been, you know, with my friend, I remember in Italy, always been that, that annoying person for them but for me it was always right that if someone you know they were opening the this uh, smoking cigar cigarette packet that for me i i don't smoke i have never smoked so that's also something that uh, i don't like but everybody mm. does every everybody does what uh, they want but yeah, yeah. we're throwing the plastic part down on the on the on the on the street and then i was no there is a trash trash bin there can you just grab that and put there yeah. okay mom they were like like this but for me is like normal you respect what you yeah. have around us so it's uh, i think that by myself i don't i don't think that i'm perfect in that in that in everything absolutely not I could do more, but I try to do my best and respect yeah, exactly. the environment yeah. as much as I can, of course. And I think the world would be better if we all actually would just try to do something at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that, but a lot of people are just like wrapped up in their own little bubble and world and trying to kind of cope with everything, and they don't really want to think anything more complicated and bigger. So. And politicians don't really care. They just care about their next election and, and money. People want to make money and <laughs> so it is kind of. Yeah, it's all about money and power. It's yeah. always about that. So. Yeah, and of course, the, the basic problem that we have is that 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 our economy is based on growth. It, it, the whole idea is that we have to grow, 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 but we cannot. That's we have to be sustainable, and that's what we should aim for to have a sustainable society. But of course, that's the interesting thing: can we change? But of course, if we cannot change, we will make the what's happening will make us to change. We have to change in the end. So, but it is kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't it's want a, to be a doomsday person. <laughs> it's 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 a deep uh, uh, argument. Uh, it's a deep uh, topic, not argument, <laughs> the right word. But yeah, yeah. and uh, but talking about uh, Thomas and Steve, how did you did you get to work with it, with them? Well, Thomas, because Thomas was in Korpiklani originally, and uh, I went with Korpiklani to make a documentary about them when they had the Russian tour. And so we started from St. Petersburg and then we went through Siberia to Vladivostok and then back. So it was, a, well, it was an amazing trip. It's just like, like especially now that, that you cannot do it anymore. It's like, you know, yeah. it was fantastic. And and, and it, it's kind of, as as Finns have always have a bit kind of like complicated relationship with Russians. So it was very eye-opening because like in Siberia, the people you meet, they were absolutely brilliant and very nice and so 
kind and helpful and everything. And so it was quite, especially when you see what's happening now and, and you realize that that it's the system that we are, it's not the people, the, the people haven't changed there. They don't probably even know what's happening and, and don't understand what's happening. And so, yeah, it's very complicated, but it was a great trip. And, and of course, because we were traveling by train and planes and buses and, and so, we had a lot of time to talk with Thomas, so we talked about everything. So because that was like you know, when when there wasn't a kick, then we were traveling, and we were able to kind of also organize some kind of side trips with Thomas because we quite quickly realized that we have very similar type of interest, and that we might be kind of musically very different, but but what we want to do and how we see things is very similar. So there was that type of kind of like telling right away. And so we, like in Havarovsk, we organized a, like a trip to the Amur River where there's kind of petroglyphs and there's a like a tribe called um, uh, the Nanai people. And uh, and it was like minus 27. And we got a local guy through Thomas's Facebook called Boris who said that I can drive you there. And uh, he didn't really speak English. It was just kind of like 20 words that were used. And uh, and we were kind of like, because we hadn't been sleeping. So we basically we went for this trip while everybody else was sleeping. So we kind of like skipped the sleeping to, to see the Nanai people. And and uh, and it was that type of kind of like, that. how is his car? Will it be able to kind of survive the minus 27? And, and how much is it going to cost? And all these kind of things. And... And he came and he said that, no, no, it's on me. It doesn't cost anything. And and then his car was modern. So it was that type of funny. But but then we were thinking that this must kind of like cost something because it was so great. And and we were like, they took us to the river like with a with a ski do and 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 it was very, very cold. And my cameras are freezing up and all that stuff. And but then we had a dinner, a lunch with them and and it was just kind of they had been fishing from the river and they just pulled the fish up and then it, they let the fish kind of freeze. So it's a frozen fish, fish and then they were chopping it off with the axe and we were just eating the raw fish with kind of some salt and pepper and some kind of additional stuff and, and vodka. And it was just brilliant. And uh, Amazing we, experience. We were, yes, and we were in the end we were thinking that well, I would like to have some kind of souvenir. I would like to buy something to remember this. And we don't have anything to sell. So so all this kind of Western idea that nobody does anything without compensation, that there's always, if somebody does something, they want something. There wasn't any of that. There were just nice people who wanted to see us and, and treat us. And, and it was brilliant. And, and there is kind of funny picture where we are going, sitting in the car. And when we are coming back and we have had a little bit of vodka and I like, in a enlightened <laughs> mood <laughs> and then we had a kick right after that and that was quite quite achievement to be filming and <laughs> slightly drunk and not have been sleeping at all and everything <laughs> but so yeah so that's how Thomas kind of got into this and and, and yeah. so Thomas has been because it has been going on for what over three years now so so yeah so and 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 then Steve plays on a couple of songs from testament so so but then there's other people there's in in siberia we met the uh band called Nutland, which is like a siberian they have a swedish name but they are kind of like shamanic music i don't really know how they describe their music it's quite interesting and, and we heard them they were kind of playing before corpic planet they were absolutely brilliant and and so so we hooked up with them and we have done two songs with them. One Siberian uh, traditional song that Natasha sang and just sent me the singing, and then I built the song around it. And then we did one Finnish folk song with them that she sang the Finnish folk song, and, and then we did a new version of that. So they are, again, quite different songs from like what you have heard, the one is out. And, and yeah. now there's another song which is coming, which is again very different from, so it, it's it's quite fun. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you release a 
one song, but uh, you have a lot of uh, music ready. So yeah. when are you going to release uh, something else? Well, the thing is that because this environmental thing, there's a there's going to be a, I don't know what you call it, like a bit like a mini documentary music video, which is quite long in the entirety, and and so it will have like you know some experts and people's comments and stuff. So it's that type of it's not really a documentary, but it's trying to kind of tell you something about what we are trying to tell people. Yeah. So. So, but that will, that's the kind of main thing at this moment that, that we are waiting to be able to, and the new song that is now finished, that will be the introduction to it. So that will come out next. And that also will have a video that will explain what it is. And then we are looking for some kind of like, you know, people to work with and, and experts and things. So it will work for that to introduce it. So, so it, it the whole thing is quite, complicated and it's quite like it's big. a big big thing so yeah. there is a so lot it, of... it, and it it kind of fits because i have a tendency that if i start to do something i always make it bigger and bigger and bigger and then i have new idea and then i have this idea and that and it's just kind of which is fine but this is yeah. kind of probably the biggest now that uh, i've ever been working on so it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you have been uh, doing uh, a lot of, uh, well, you have been doing documentaries and uh, some movie shorts and uh, music videos. Uh, you are behind also the promised land of heavy metal. Uh, that, yeah. that yeah. is about Finland metal mm -hmm. scene. So that was something that I watched in the past, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So I was... Yeah, yeah. How was it received uh, that that documentary? Well, I think it, it it was quite because it was at the height of the Finnish metal. It was exactly the right time because the height of the Finnish metal was when when Lordi won the Eurovision Song Contest. Then suddenly the metal became accepted to acceptable to anybody in Finland, everybody, and and that's the kind of like the like we have in the you've seen the Finnish president is interviewed about heavy metal and and she's saying how great it is and it's good for Finnish economy and all that stuff and and that was like like when we had filmed everything I said that we all be missing the president and then we hmm and I have a friend who is up in politics and and he helped connect with the with the president's office and and then surprisingly it took quite a lot of like because there was a lot of people worried about how it's going to go and how the president will appear in it and all this stuff. But 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 yeah, no, it happened. And I don't think it would happen anywhere else in the world that you would have the country's president in a heavy metal documentary. <laughs> so so I, th I thought that was like absolutely stunning. And and, uh, and and it was quite fun film to do because I I by then already I had lived here so long time that I really didn't know much anything about what's happening in Finland. So for me, it was also like that type of that I actually came back to look into it. So it was quite perfect way of doing it. And and I've been kind of entertaining and making a sequel for it. That what's now, and I actually have filmed quite a lot for the sequel, but it just haven't happened. And I yeah. don't think it will. It's like, yeah, that was <laughs> that. Yeah, so may maybe it's going to happen, maybe not, but... Maybe I've released some of the stuff that I've done, yeah. like... Yeah. In the because it's always and... interesting, and yeah. with the metal scene uh, changing uh, all yeah. over the world, uh, it's all the time changing nowadays, so more bands are, like, um, experimenting more, mixing more different yeah. genres, so I think it could be... Yeah, interesting to to hear what and compare maybe with the pre with the previous uh, mm. shoot. Yeah, yeah and, and and it is a bit the because heavy metal is everything is kind of done. It, 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 there's there's so much repeat, and and it, it's again like you know where where can it go and and and. It's a bit complicated, and of course, there's been a lot of crossovers with metal and and 
dance music and there's like what's the band uh is it browning which is quite good it's like a disco metal band and and but it is very heavy and it, I, I like it i know probably a lot of people hate it but 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 it's quite nice that that both yeah telling everything together and 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 that's part of it because i've i've been playing so long time that i'm i'm quite fed up with the guitar solos because it's kind of like yeah i've played this before so i've been now trying to do different things play yeah. different and try to get something out of the guitar that is experimenting and going to some other direction and but like like here i have a guitar that has more frets so yeah. it's a micro micro tonal guitar so basically it has like when you have normally half step there's a quarter so basically you can play oriental scales on this so and if you just play normally without thinking it it can sound that it's out of tune but but it it's it's been used on the new song and it actually the song had been kind of done and then i got this guitar and then i started to think what could i play on top of this and and that it completely opened it into different direction it became something completely different much better than it was before. So yeah, yeah. So that type of things I'm kind of like you know looking for, and I have like a like a electric cello, like a sort cello that that I use quite a lot to make weird sounds. I can, but I, of course I can play it like to a certain level, but not the set set cellist. But but it's kind of great to create like you know drones and yeah, or yeah. Kind of escapes and you know yeah yeah it's interesting <laughs> yeah how many guitars do you own <laughs> yeah that that's what Judith is asking me all the how many guitars you now have and but not that many not uh uh 11 okay yeah i used to have more but basically i long time ago i decided that i have just guitars that i actually play so basically so that they are not just hanging around and so basically i'm going to sell few guitars also to make more space yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there is one guitar that is uh, your favorite the one that you use more Mm, there's a, a little bit different type of guitars. This is a new one. It, it's kind of like aluminium body and, and it's brilliant to play. And uh, normal guitar. But then this one here is a... This is kind of like a eight string. And it's also like, you know, the... It's called fan fret because the scale is... It's kind of like this is very low. This is like a bass yeah, and I this see. is guitar. So basically, you have like bass and guitar in one thing, and th this is brilliant for for making all kind of riffs and things. So that's for that, and I, I really like this. This is one of guitar by an Australian guitar maker, and and I was lucky. I didn't order it. I just found it, and I've been experimenting with eight strings and things, and and uh, but I had didn't. I haven't had this type of multi scale because this is very extreme. That, that as you see, that normally guitar is like this, so the scale length is the same. But with this, you have have the kind of like very low and yeah. very high. So, so I was really lucky to get this because all the other A string experiments that I've done, they none of them really worked. They they didn't do what I wanted, and and this actually does exactly what I want. So. So that's uh, yeah, and but that's the and then of course this one that I told you that that's quite this is the yeah. model. And this is this one. Uh, uh, did you both was made for you? What? Uh, I this this kind of like you know somebody had done this, so I bought this guitar so that it had the the extra frets. But then I, I did all the kind of like, because I modify them. So this has a electromagnetic sustainer. So basically, if you if you play an old, it will go on forever. Because this pickup kind of like works as if you would have feedback from the amplifier. 
but it's like a control so it you can repeat the same every time with the amplifier you are just you just have to try to get it so 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 yeah so oh, yes i have had kind of custom made guitars but but all these are like you know this is a weird company it's a chinese company that came a couple of years ago and uh and uh it had absolutely horrendous reviews on the internet some american american guys like you know because it is metal and and there's it's a similar kit this is the same guitar here but this is black and this has this is kind of like a carbon neck this is wood neck and he kind of like put this on a railway track and he jump on the guitar to see how strong it is and the it, nothing broke but but there's a like you know truss rod like a metal yeah. rod in the neck that keeps it straight and you can adjust it so that bent and then he drove his jeep over the body to, and you're kind of like, what the hell is he proving with this if you have like you know like a three thousand pound Gibson, you are never going to be jumping on top of it or driving a car over it because it's not meant to be. You never do that. So, so it was just and so basically it has so horrible reviews that they went bankrupt right away. But it's absolutely it, it's it's stunningly brilliant. So and I got to know about them when they already were bankrupt. So I got this from Australia. I have to order it from there because. That there was this was from UK. That was the only one that was on sale here. Okay. So yeah, so so it's yeah. The, quite often the weird guitars are something that if there's a manufacturer that does a weird guitar that I like, they usually go bankrupt because guitarists are very conventional. They kind of like Fender Stratocaster and Gibson Les Paul, and they don't really want to experiment with anything. It's just the guitars remain the same. And and so every, every, anybody who makes something radical, it it's just like you know some people pick it up like me and think yay, and then it's just the other one are like no, <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, so have, yeah. have you have you ever tried the Chapman stick? I'm interested about it, but I think it probably is. It's yeah no I yeah I know it and and I've been looking at them they are quite expensive so it's not really something that you want to buy to just try it out if it doesn't yeah. work and in a way it doesn't do anything that i couldn't do like the a string has similar type of so yeah. so it, but it's quite interesting yeah. yeah but there's one guitar here that i use as a wow. just like it, <laughs> giving light <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's cool <laughs> yeah so it has like it's kind of like a mirror and 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 leds inside and <laughs> it doesn't even have strings at this moment because i really don't play it it's just kind of like a like a mood light <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah nice but uh, let's talk about um, uh, music video because uh, you also direct and film music video uh yeah. for uh, what i understood let me mm -hmm. know if i'm wrong because <laughs> i can be you yeah. work with uh, madonna uh, mm -hmm. Merve, vader for example yeah so did, did, yeah. did you did you film their music video some of their music video well vader was like i moved here like 92 and uh and it was earache records and and I did a couple of music videos for them and, and Vader was one that we went to Poland to make it and, and it was a quite an adventure. And uh and it's one of those that I thought that this might be the video that will never get done because we had so much problems. And uh and it turned out to be in the end all the problems worked in the favor for the so it the look of it was it's how it looks like wasn't that I was planning it to look like that, but it, it was because we didn't have enough lights and all that. So it's quite dark and everything, which worked well for it. And and of course, like like Piotr or Peter, I've kind of known him since then. And, and I met him in Japan uh, 2016. That was 
17 with the Korpiklani when we were doing another documentary and 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 it was quite fun to meet him and 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 he asked me to write about the when we were making the video and and there's a way the book it's I think it's at this moment it's only in Polish but there's a chapter about making the video and then and, and because they were really happy because for them that was because it, when we arrived they were like you know kind of like MTV MTV because it was in MTV it, it, the video was played in the MTV metal so and 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 so it was but we went from MTV but by they were kind of like you know so excited and and because back then Poland had just come out of the you know the Soviet Union thing and 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 so basically they were really really poor and and they they kind of like you know they had a like a Floyd Rose tremolo in a guitar and, and it was handmade and I was like, oh that's interesting it's handmade and yeah I would like to have a real Floyd Rose but it cost like you know two months salary to get it and that was something that you was oh my god this is like you know that you are complaining here in that oh I don't have enough money but but it's yeah you actually have it just kind of like you know don't yeah. know it but but it was yeah no that was a great great video that's something that I always from the music videos I remember it kindly that it, it was a great adventure and they were really lovely guys and and it was yeah it it actually I was tempted to write the script movie script about it because it could have been that type of comedy comedy music promo makers in Poland <laughs> film and it would there were so much things happening that it's just like you know you could have just written what happened and it would be a good yeah. film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like Madonna and that stuff that that's when in nineties and I still occasionally do, but not that much. That 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 that's like when you are part of a bigger team working like, you know, kind of like like we did a was a kind of like a TV documentary about Madonna that we did. So I was one of the cameramans in that and a close up camera. <laughs> so so that kind of like and so it 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 differs like you know the, some of the music videos the ones that I like are the ones where there isn't a big crew but there's just a couple of people doing it because then it's like to me that's real filmmaking because then you're actually doing everything when you are in the kind of big productions in London you are just kind of like part of a 20 people team so for me that's quite boring because it's it's most of the time you are just waiting for something to happen and, and nothing is really and it's not exceedingly effective or anything so but the guy that I've worked with Eugene O'Connor he is kind of like in that world like we're kind of like we're doing the same thing but I kind of went more towards my own I don't know what it is kind of independent filmmaker or something where he stayed in the in the kind of big music industry so he does like this gigantic things and, and which are really stunning and yeah. hell of a money and everything and troubles the world and and it suits him he likes it and and but it's again I wouldn't change with him yeah. you know I, I I could have maybe continued but it's not in my it's for me it's different what I want to do so choices <laughs> yeah and everybody has its own way of doing things yeah. and things that likes we are all different so that's 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 good <laughs> yeah 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 no it is yeah yeah everybody's needed yeah but let's go to the question there is a, a question that to, tommy sarinen left for you so okay. what what albums or musical pieces in general have the best soundscape in your opinion from all the music in the world. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting question. I. Hmm. I. I. It, music that actually kind of gets to me is uh, like Mesuka. It's a band that that I I don't I basically like metal that has a bit like blues and that type of kind of like like feelings. But Mesuka, which is more like, a, I don't know what it is, math core or whatever, but there's something that is kind of like 
some sort of subconscious level that it connects with my brain. So some of their music is, and they have inspired me with the kind of like as we spell like with the with the low end, like the eight string guitar to kind of have the low stuff. And and so so that's something then because I'm just trying to figure out what I'm listening. But the the thing is that because I, I basically like quite many type of music and it's like like at some end like if you if you think about music that has like gives you like a landscape that he used the word landscape it's like Philip Glass it's like but he's not metal <laughs> he kind of does this modern is it modern classical music but so it, it's quite complicated yeah. because I do listen to all kind of music and I do listen to a lot of metal and 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 like one of my weirdly like you know if I'm annoyed about things I listen to hate breed and and I know a lot of people probably don't like hate breed but I kind of do like it and because hate breed has this all the songs are kind of like that type of self-improvement songs like you know that, that about like you know how you if some somebody is oppressing you, how you will fight and you will rise again and that type of so hatred works in that type of weird primitive level. And I kind of like to listen to them and quite often when I if I'm exercising or something, I listen to hatred because it makes me kind of like feel yay. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So it it's it's quite yeah. But like if you talk about that type of landscape music, of course then you get into film music and there's of course a lot of good film music and so it's, it's quite complicated to answer yeah question. it's not easy to pick just one so no no yeah, yeah. but uh, talking about the uh, rock heavy music if you look back when you were younger how hmm. did you get into rock music or heavier music well, that that actually is very clear. There was a clear moment that I actually still remember, that I was kind of like there's a place called place called Mellila near Turku, which is kind of like was a big farm where I spent all my summers, and and I probably was about I don't know twelve, and uh, we had this old plowpum radios <laughs> that that for yeah, and uh, and the, and Alice Cooper's Killer was playing on the radio. And I remember when I heard it, I thought, I've never heard anything like this. This is like, and I wasn't even interested in music before that. But that somehow triggered that, well, I want to start to play. Yeah. And, and so then we were started to make up, like I did with my father, we built a bass for me and, and, and stuff like that. So, so, but it was Alice Cooper that really got me into music and okay. how it started. Nice. And then, of course, there was Deep Purple, which was quite like important at that time. Uriah Heep, so a little bit lesser importance. And, but then there was all kind of weird bands like uh, Lucifer's Friend, which was uh, it was kind of it's not metal. It's just some kind of I don't know what. There was Edgar Broughton band that had an album called Vasa Vasa, which is kind of like. It's not metal, but it has the essence of the aggression and that type of weirdness, and 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 so so. But that was the kind of thing that that at that time there was a lot of like you know kind of psychedelic music, progressive music, uh, pop, jazz, rock, blues, and they all kind of like were influencing what I was doing. So so there's. And like Psycho Life has a lot of that. It's it's not really that heavy as an album. It's it's kind of like no, I don't know what it is, rock. But there, but there's always of the old albums. There is the certain psychedelia. There's always been like one song that like the Black Contract that is completely experimental, weird, and 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 the kind of Psycho Life had the ending, which was the what was it? There was Astro Flyer, and then it yeah. But anyway, so. So, and the themes, they all the albums kind of, Motorino didn't have a theme, but the two first albums had a theme. So yeah. that was all kind of like that. The music was actually at that time, there was a lot of interesting stuff because everybody was kind of trying things and it was that type of 
in a way the golden age that that, that uh, everything was new and exciting and, and that's what i quite often that could, when i was doing my music it was quite the, great that that everybody hated it like not everybody but you know like in general if there was that type of and that was what you wanted to do you wanted to shock people you wanted to do some rebellion and that's kind of part of the metal the kind of like being against the system and now you can really be because now it doesn't matter how extreme metal you play you still have people who are kind of 70 and say, oh yeah i like this music because it's it's been a long around so long time that it's not shocking anymore if you yeah. think about it, if you listen to the bands that that seventies, like you know, Deep Purple and all these, they were really kind of by parents considered horrible music, but they are just kind of very melodic music and and easy to listen now, and anybody can listen to them. I like yeah, them so, true. and that's why a lot of the old music that was extreme is now like you know just like in every TV program and well, Alice Cooper's Cool Out is kind of played every. When school ends, if you hear it on the radio, and it's the headmaster who is actually wanted to have it played in the radio, and yeah. and it's kind of it's funny, but it's also quite sad because, like, if you're a young person now and you want to kind of do something, it's very hard to kind of envision what you do, how you gonna do something that would be seen as wow, that's something yeah. new. So, but of course, there's always some ways, but yeah. But, whether people because it is for me it's quite weird that a lot of the old music is still the young people like it now so so you have all these kind of same hits that were in 60s are now you have like 20 year olds who are listening to some same music that that like my brother was listening who is older than me and and it's just kind of yeah it's weird yeah <laughs> there are those songs that are like uh immortal let's say yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they 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 are always up and people whatever the age is uh, they they appreciate it so hmm. yeah. yeah but let's take my jar the one okay with yeah, the yeah. random topics so let's see what we are getting today i feel in this hopefully not politics we have a paranormal um so oh <laughs> we are living paranormal activities that is quite funny because basically when I was a kid, like, you know, when I was 10 something, I was very, that's like sarcophagus has like, you know, the Egyptian themes in the, like, you know, the album and all that. And so, of course, that game that I was interested in the ancient things. And and I was a big fan of Eric von Daniken, who you, I don't know, do you know the name? I have heard, but I it, it, it doesn't click now. He wrote books that that like did we come from the stars? So he he had this alternative way of seeing the history, and uh, and and he kind of like like the Old Testament. He had a lot of like you know that that Ezekiel that when he had his vision, he said that he saw a spacecraft landing, and and then like you know. A NASA uh, rocket designer thought, "Well, I'm going to prove him wrong," and he went through the how he described Ezekiel the vision, and and the NASA guy wrote the book where he said that yeah, he saw a <laughs> rocket. So, so basically, yes, they, I've always been very interested in all kind of like paranormal, but also like you know the the possibility of aliens and and also the how our history is because of course the the great thing about eric von Daniken was that when i was young he he kind of like taught me that 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 you don't you shouldn't believe what's been told to you because the whole history is just what they uh, agreed that this is the history but we don't know how old the pyramids are because they cannot be dated so we just say that they were kind of like 3,000 years old, but they could as well be 10,000 years old yeah. or older. Yeah. So we don't know. And this is like he freed that type of thinking, which I, I thought was brilliant. And, and because what's happening now with the world, that it's not a very happy place with all the kind of like, we have the global collapse there quite close by. We have war in Ukraine. We have like, you know, Israel, Palestine, 
thing going on. So so I kind of like, you know, started to, there's a channel called Gaia, which is uh, G-A-I-A, which is kind of about paranormal, alternative history, UFOs, all kind of things. And it's 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 a big channel. So I just sub subscribed to it like a month ago. Okay. And I've been watching documentaries about UFOs and and, wow. and there's a there's an Eric von Daniken documentary which I've been watching and be very interesting to kind of like go back in time and and in a way I think that it's a bit kind of like escapism that 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 because the world is quite it's nice to kind of go into this different world where there's all kind of other interesting yeah, yeah. possibilities that yeah whether they are true or not that's a, but it's it's quite interesting to see to yeah. Yeah. things about yeah i i always think that yeah uh, for many things uh, yeah it's good to just uh, relate on a, a scientific based evidence based mm. but then there are so many things that uh, they have no answer so yeah. then mm. then you 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 keep this uh no what if it's uh yeah something else and, and because you you can are, you cannot know everything <laughs> no and there are things that that like like there's a thing called antikythera machine which is in the athen museum and it was found near the antikythera island the greek archipelago and uh and it's basically kind of like a rusted lump of thing and and but it's clearly a gear like clockwork and uh and i think it's the geographic National Geographic that actually was able to use some kind of X-ray that sliced the whole thing, so they could actually see how it used to be, like you know how, and it's very complicated. It's like a computer, mechanical computer, but it's dated. Is it like hundred or two hundred before Christ? And we didn't have any clockwork back then. We have clockwork, I think, about thousand after. So it's it's basically something that shouldn't be there because. We didn't have the technology, and yet it is in the museum, so you can go and see it, and it exists. But yet we are not really hearing about it, you know, yeah. that it's changed the, how we see the past, because it would mess up the past, so, so we just don't yeah. talk about it. <laughs> so yeah, that's true, kind of, true. That's, it's that's the way of dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fact, but we don't really talk about it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, let's just not make people know too much about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah but let's get another one let's see what's uh -huh. the okay. topic uh, this 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 one seems like well it's food food so what's uh -huh. your favorite food uh that yeah that's an interesting question because i kind of eat everything so I, when I was in Finland, I was like a typical Finn that if I go to a restaurant, you had the pepper steak, and that was the only thing that you ate. And but since then, I've, I've kind of I've, I've traveled quite all the world, and at some point, I realized that 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 you should just eat everything there is as long as it doesn't make you sick. But so basically, I do like everything. But if but in a way that if if you think about that, because you are going to talk about pizzas, but I do like pizzas. I, I think if if I would, if you would ask something, if I would need to say first thing that comes into my mind, it would be pizza. Yeah. So that maybe is my favorite. You know what I'm saying? That, that yeah. It's, yeah. Of course, you can have some really fancy and fantastic food, but I that's not like my favorite food because I'm not eating it all the time. Yeah, you so know, maybe... with the food, sometimes it's better to keep it simple. Uh, hmm. not growing up in Italy and uh, not having that much money, so it was always so. Let's let's eat what 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 we have. So normally yeah. there was pasta is something that every Italian eats daily. Yeah. Basically. So there was uh, the pasta with uh, um, butter and yeah. some yeah. Uh, grana cheese, for example. That's something yeah. that uh, it's a easy way to have a plate that is uh, going to keep you. Yeah, it's good. I I like it. But I remember when uh, once I I had the food with me in uh, during my break at work. Uh, 
when I was a cleaner back back in time here in Finland. And my workmates were, you are eating pasta without nothing. And then I was, no, there is butter and cheese. Yeah, without nothing. No. <laughs> you should put no, some no, no. ketchup. And I was, no, no, no. This is this is tasty like it is. <laughs> so for no. me, it's like, no. keep it simple. Yes, no. I of course, I like uh, also when someone, not the ketchup on pasta, but when someone does some, <laughs> for example, for the meat, I, I like to keep the meat also just oil, salt and paper, but uh, of course I like also with the cream or uh, the way that uh, most things do. But uh, yeah, keep it simple. And with pizza is the the basic pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it, 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 the food is, I think, I basically, yeah, I, I'm not the vegetarian or anything, but I do tend to go more towards, I, I'm not... I eat meat, but I don't. I think the Not the less much. you eat meat, the less you actually want to eat it. And 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 it's like kind of like a, I do like burgers, but if there's an alternative like a halloumi burger or something, I go for that. But yeah. it, occasionally, it's nice to have a proper burger. But but the meat is yeah, it is kind of somehow been sliding away from the menu. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. we just like Friday, we went out with friends and, and we have a really lovely Mexican restaurant around the corner and, and they have very traditional Mexican food and it's, uh, that was brilliant. It's yeah. like enchiladas and tacos and nice. and that's again like that type of, yeah, that you could say that is brilliant food. <laughs> but talking about pizza, what's your favorite pizza? I I would say Diavolo. Hmm. Like, you know, Good one kind of hot and yeah meat yeah. and yeah yeah i think that a lot we have very good pizzeria also locally and 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 they have but it's like they know what i want so i don't have to look at the menu it's like, okay yeah. <laughs> the devil <all> over <laughs> or something similar that if there's kind of like you know the hot ones yeah yeah, yeah. I, don't, okay. I don't want them to be exceedingly hot but like you know like Nice that, that, that that's you know that yeah. kick that kick you yeah. know so you don't sweat you yeah know, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where yeah, did you eat the worst pizza ever i think the worst ones are like if you're like in canary islands or somewhere where they do these pizzas that have hell of a lot of cheese and and they are so heavy that you're going to like feeling that you have eaten a rock or something you know the, the, <laughs> most are the, but then again they remind you of the holiday somewhere in sun because they, they all seem to do a similar type of pizzas you know that type of really heavy so yeah and weirdly enough there's a long time ago i don't remember what the pizza was but i was in northern italy and i didn't really like the pizza there it, it wasn't it i was don't know <laughs> i don't remember but i remember I don't remember what it was, but I remember that I didn't like it. So yeah, that was yeah. quite interesting because it was the home of pizza. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for a lot of people, uh, for for example, for people from uh, uh, Napoli, Nap Naples, um, the real pizza is just there. So if you go in nor northern Italy, it's not going to be real pizza. But for nowadays, it's more easy to find uh, the real pizza then there are good and bad pizzerias in italy so you you just need to get to know from the people that live in the place uh which one is the best because otherwise yeah. if you get in a one like tourist place you are not going to get good food it's it's always like this and you have to bring your own pineapples <laughs> about pineapples um, <laughs> what's your opinion because it's a big topic uh, does no. pineapple a, belong a, to pizza there, or not there's a Finnish pizza what was it called that has pineapple was it Hawaii no it wasn't Hawaii it was something and it actually was quite nice I, I, have, I have no problem with pineapple on a pizza Okay. but I haven't seen it since Finland and that was in the kind of 80s that <laughs> that's not the time. That's pineapple pizza. Yeah, actually, there are some places in Italy that sell Hawaii, Hawaiiana pizza. So, okay. which, uh, yeah. pine 
pineapple and uh, um, ham. So yeah. That that's yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's the yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think that's probably in the Finnish Finnish pizzeria menu still. Yeah, it's still a big thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of Finns uh, likes the yeah. that on pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't yeah. like well, it, but if it's not on my pizza, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always the kind of like because one thing that that a lot of Finns like is the Frankfurters. And here everybody thinks that that's the ultimate crap that you can eat. And there's nothing like a boiled frankfurt and mustard. And yeah. because that, with my father, we used to go, there was these kiosks in, in Helsinki that were selling just like frankfurters. They were kind of like in a big boiling water thing and, and they picked them up and yeah. wrapped in paper and mustard. And, and that was a special treat. Yeah, and, yeah. And it is still like, you know, that that I occasionally do that and everybody, how can you do that? <laughs> I don't know, but it tastes good. <laughs> um, it's fun to think about how it's different uh, in uh, different countries. Yeah, and but, it is kind of like childhood memories and things like that. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't be eating it every week. So maybe I eat it once a, once a year. So then, then it becomes... Like a, and also I like the kind of controversy that it creates that people are like outraged. Yeah, how <laughs> that's yeah. fun every time that some Italian person get mad on food. But yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, I have a question left from the previous guest. So the previous okay. guest uh, asked you to name three th things that makes you happy at the moment. Three things that made me happy at this moment. Okay, well, uh, I'm quite happy about my life. I think that that all the things that it's quite balanced, and uh, and my stepdaughter is pregnant, so she's going to have a baby in 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 March. So that's quite happy thing, and 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 uh, yeah, and I'm quite happy with the music and and like how. It's a lot of work, but it's kind of like it's not work. It's 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 just kind of like I I I, I kind of learned to do it without pressure. I think yeah. that's the kind of, I, I just do it. and and then it when it's ready, it's ready, and not like the schedules that used to be with the commercial work that you have to deliver in a certain deadline day, and and you're very good at that. But but yeah, so yeah, so. Was that three things? <laughs> yeah, it was. And now it's yeah. your turn to leave a question for the next guest. Okay. Well, I could pass on the kind of... What do they think about the possibility of the environment to collapse? That that we run out of... Run out of kind of resources and... Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. That's well, a good one. Yeah, it's yeah. it, it's kind of yeah, it's it's yeah. not the, like a happy ending question. <laughs> yeah, but, but whatever but my, we are yeah, hoping to yeah, about exactly, every yeah. question. Yeah, because I that's part of it. What I'm going to do with the answer streaming that I'm going to interview just ordinary people about this, and I'm really interested in young people because I yeah, think they should be a little bit more worried about things. I'm not saying that they should be kind of like you know, oh, yeah, world is ending, but but worried in a way that they would try to change things and demand change. And, and, and of course, there's a lot of young activists and stuff like that, but, but kind of like constructively, not like chaining yourself into a machinery or something. That doesn't really do anything. It's just annoying people, but, yeah. but actively trying to figure out what should we do. So, thinking. so in that way, it, 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 I am quite interested at what people yeah. think. Yeah. Because it, it is, a lot of people accept that, yeah, something is wrong but but it's not it's not really kind of registering into their yeah. thinking just like you know yeah 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 <laughs> but we are we are at the end of this uh episode of metal pizza thank you so much for being my guest it was really a pleasure you had a yeah, lot no, of story fun. and uh, we have two minutes left so do you want to say something to people that are watching listening this episode why no well, i don't know maybe kind of like you know Maybe I don't know because I don't want to be preaching. It's like you know that type of stuff because it's it's it, it, the environmental stuff because I think about it a lot and it's 
part of all these things. So I, it, there's a tendency of saying something about that. That, yeah, but it's not really. I think people there's all the information. People should find it and read about it and 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 try to kind of think how they can be more sustainable. That you don't need everything. And uh, the interesting thing with the pins that there was the this somebody in Finnish university studied that because Finland has been selected the happiest country in the world several times. Why? And he said that it's not happiness. It's Finns are content because Finns know when they have enough. And that is true because I had the problem that when I was thinking big things and they were, no, no, I, why would I do? I have, everything is fine. And it actually, that's that's how we should be. We should be thinking that I have enough. I don't need the next thing. I don't need this. I don't need that. But you know what I'm saying. That maybe yeah. that's the kind of like yeah. But yeah. try to figure out what you really need, and then forget all the other crap because most of the stuff is just crap. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> okay.